right. Welcome, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Good to see all of your faces this evening. Thank you for all of the guests that are here tonight. I'm so excited you have decided to join us, or maybe you're watching the replay. You know, this is our second in the series of four where we are focusing on not only March Madness and all the amazing things that are happening right now, but we are focusing on women doctors and practitioners in the holistic health field. And I have a fantastic practitioner that I'm going to introduce to you all just here in a minute. If you don't have your screen set to speaker view in the upper right hand corner, please go ahead and change that to speaker view. So you'll see myself and Jill this evening and be able to, um, Pay close attention to what's going on up here in the information that's being shared. So before we get started, my name is Dr. Stacy Holweger, and I am not a medical doctor. I am not your doctor, uh, but I do have a PhD in integrative medicine and a PhD in functional medicine. So I love to focus on the holistic side of healing modalities and tools to fill my toolbox. And LifeWave is a technology that I have been utilizing in my practice and with doctors and practitioners around the globe, everyday people, for the last almost three years now. So I do want to share with you before we get started that if you are new to LifeWave or maybe you're a veteran or a guest, um, that the information that we're sharing tonight is not intended to treat or cure any disease. It's not intended to prevent anything. If you're pregnant or nursing, please check with your healthcare practitioner. And if you are on medications, if you have any health concerns, you're going to reference your practitioner or doctor that sees you, not myself or not Jill this evening. But a little bit later on, we will be taking questions. And I want you to keep in mind that those questions you're going to be putting in the chat Please make sure that you're sharing your symptoms that you are experiencing so we can address those symptoms with the patches that would work best for you in your situation. Again, we won't be talking about any diseases or any syndromes or anything like that at all, okay? So with that, I am so excited to introduce to you Jill Garrett. Now, Jill is a certified holistic consultant and practitioner. And she's also an expert level advanced wellness coach. She has been credited in Western medicine, okay? So Western medicine for 28 years with an accredited certification as a nurse holistic practitioner with an emphasis on alternative therapies as an expert level wellness coach, consultant, holistic nutritionist, and has a holistic approach in her practice since 2010. She's the owner of a busy health and wellness practice. It's called Whole for Life with locations, two different locations in South Carolina. Walla, I believe how you say that, Walla, South Carolina. I have to correct me on that, Jill, and Anderson, South Carolina. And she's the owner of Whole for Life Apothecary, which is filled with her own private label blended professional grade Cotton and supplements. And Jill is also a senior director with LifeWave. So Jill, I would love for you to come on here. And, you know, we kind of talked about this ahead of time. Take us to, you know, your, your background, your profession, because you have 28 years of experience on both Eastern and Western medicine. And then, you know, of course, bring us up to speed. You know, how, how were you introduced to LifeWave? How did this modality in holistic health and healing come into your sphere? What have you noticed? What have you experienced? And then I know you have some fantastic things you want to share with us, um, of course, about how the technology works, what is happening with your clients in your practice every day. So thank you, Jill, for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Stacey. It is my honor and privilege for sure. Um, so obviously I have been in Western medicine or what we know here in the U.S. is traditional medicine. This is my 28th year. Um, I started out very young, truly. Uh, I'd like to say I was 12, but, you know, I really was about 18 when I got my, started my first nursing degree. And so 
everything was pretty much traditional medicine, but I always had questions beyond the traditional scope. Um, I practiced traditional medicine for many years, and then I stepped away and more into a consulting role. As my kids got a little bit older, I wanted to be home and be available. They played sports, all those things, and so just wanted to make sure that I was uh, family first priority, um, and so my husband graciously um, took the burden of all of the workload, and then I was able to consult here and there. As our children aged, uh, my oldest kind of followed the path that I had followed when I was young, which was my parents did all of the right things to the best of their ability. Um, and I was the only one in my family, truly my immediate family, that was overweight. And so when I decided to have children, I was certain that that wasn't going to happen. We were going to do all the right things and that kind of stuff. And our oldest sort of followed the same path. And when we went into the physician's office, and again, I had a really good working relationship in our community, it was, well, you know, you need to just give him some metformin and um, because he's going to be insulin resistant and we need to put him on a calorie deficit and all that. And so it just didn't make sense to me. And I was simultaneously fighting a terrible case of shingles. I had an outbreak um, every 11 months for 12 months. And so there again, they wanted to do the traditional stuff and it just didn't make sense. So I started asking questions and I started down a more holistic or natural path, really full fledged at that point. So that's sort of how um, my career in alternative medicines and my credentialing took place. And I still very much, I'm very thankful for Western medicine. I tell people if I cut my finger off, I'm not gonna go rub dirt on it. I'm gonna find a surgeon and have my finger reattached. But um, if you tell me literally there's anything else going on, it's probably not going to be my first stop. And so that's sort of how we practice at our clinics as well. Um, so fast forward to friends and family. As I was starting to get these credentials, they wanted some help. And then their friends wanted help and their friends wanted help. And so in 2000, um, well, actually, we're celebrating this year, our five year anniversary being open to the public. Mm -hmm. um, I was sitting in church one Sunday morning and God just dropped every bit of whole for life into my heart. And if you know mm -hmm. anything about the medical board and licensing and all of that, to have that happen on Sunday and Wednesday be open for business um, has to be truly a miracle. Mm -hmm. I give them all the credit for that. So that's kind of how we open to the public. We see about 100 patients a week now on average. Um, and then, of course, the passion project of the apothecary has been part of my journey for the past six years for sure and we finally saw that to fruition this year so um but i very much practice traditional medicine i always laugh and say the amount of unlearning i had to do to do what we do today um is unbelievable but um for the past 20 years really i have practiced healthy uh modalities and more alternative therapy holistic approaches um but since 2010 it's been exclusive for my family and for myself and then for friends and family and now the public so um we do run two very busy clinics we see all sorts of things from things i never really intended i really did truly want to be a wellness clinic but mm -hmm. um we've we've just i think because modern medicine um there's a lot to be desired in a lot of ways. And so we see everything from an earache all the way through to those rogue, atypical, rapidly growing cells. And sometimes it's because people don't want to do the, you know, the traditional approach. And sometimes it's they want to do a, an adjunctive approach where we're doing both things. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's where they've just been given no hope. And so this is where we are. Um, which kind of enters LifeWave for us. Obviously, we've been using a lot of, we have a couple of different therapies we offer in the office, that kind of stuff. We've made progress uh, for years. But Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer, you had on last week, she's yeah. been a friend of mine for a long time and um, just highly valued person. And she's the one that introduced me to LifeWave. I had heard about the technology uh, quite a few years ago, and I didn't think it was available in the U.S. I said then, you know, if you ever make it to the U.S., uh, sign me up um, because I also don't have the greatest family history personally. So while I am healthy now, um, you know, you want to do all that you can to stay that way. And so um, she told me about it. And uh, I am the nerd, the science, because of that Western medicine, probably the science still has to be there for me. So I spent um, hours more than I want to admit, uh, pouring over, I am the nerd that has read every one of those clinical trials. Mm -hmm. So um, I immediately by the first weekend, I was ready to go with my practice, I wanted to have them available 
for retail. I also wanted to have the opportunity for, you know, wholesale and things like that for our patients as well. So we just kind of dove in. I got the biggest package you could get and we dove in and haven't looked back. Um, and the results that I personally have seen, I was fairly healthy. So, um, you know, I because I had had shingles so many times, I did have what I call the spongy heel. Uh, mm. They always started on the left side of my body. And sometimes it was from the cranial nerve all the way down. Mm. Sometimes it was the sciatic all the way down. It just varied. Sometimes it was just the trunk. But I did was left with some what I would consider nerve damage in my heel. And so the very first thing I noticed, because I wasn't the one that now some of my office staff, they absolutely are the one patch wonders. But for me, I didn't really notice anything. I just believed the science. I knew it was working. And so I did it more preventatively. Mm -hmm. And one morning I woke up and I said, I don't have a spongy heel at all anymore. Um, now, mind you, I wasn't having any you know, pains or anything like that, but I thought I'm going to do a little test. So um, because I knew nerves, you know, the nervous system is the slowest healing system in the entire body. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, OK, we've made some progress, probably not totally repaired. So I can very easily just take these off for a day or two and see what happens. And it was quite obvious that the patching absolutely was taking care of my nerve issue. Oh, okay. So um, that was huge for me. I think that even though I've always been a good sleeper, I think it's just deeper now. I think that, um, I, I mean, there's so many things and I did have, I have the wrong shirt on today because it's cold here, but um, I had a shingle scar that had been with me. It was the only one that had been with me since 2010. And so I did my own little experiment with Alavita. Mm -hmm. And um, I should have shared with you the before and afters are unbelievable mm -hmm. in four days. So um, yeah, so that's, that's sort of my story. Um, my kids, even though they're adult kids now, if mom says it's good for you, they do it. So they are, their performance has improved their, uh, my youngest was a, an elite travel ball player. He had an ankle injury. We patched him in two days. He was totally fine again. Um, my husband, I always say he's my best and worst advertisement all wrapped into one. You know, husbands sometimes go rogue and eat what they want to eat and do what they want to do. Um, <laughs> but he doesn't miss his patches. He wears them every day because he sees the difference. And a lot of the natural things he does, he does because I tell him he needs to do them. Um, and he just trusts that. But he can't tell you that even our supplements that we created, he can't tell you they're really doing something for him. These patches, he can definitely tell. No afternoon slump, slump good energy. He's dropped six pant sizes. I mean, it's pretty. Six? Yes. Um, yeah. So, and, and, you know, he's cleaned up his diet some, uh, we certainly can't attribute it to diet. <laughs> so, uh, definitely that X 49 has made a huge difference for him. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, you know, I can spend the whole rest of the hour talking to you about the things we've seen in the clinic. So okay, I'll before you do, before you do <laughs> tell me, everybody wants to know when, when did you start using the patches? So how long ago, what so patches are you using? And then kind of what was that time frame that you noticed those changes with your spongy heel and the sleep and that stuff? So, and I am, um, you know, the, the patches themselves, I started using, I am a biomarker girl. So mm -hmm. I have my biological age tested every year and I really should have led with that, but I didn't. Um, so I had just had my biomarkers checked before I started this at age 44. Okay. I was um, approximately 39, biologically speaking. So chronologically 44, biologically 39, which, you know, for those that don't know, that means your organs, your skin, your hair, your eyes, your heart, your lungs, all of that um, are functioning at about age 39. Yeah. So I patched for, I should have patched for about five months, but it was time for me to have biomarkers again. So I patched for four months. Four mm -hmm. months is when I really started noticing the big, big changes that, but there again, I was paying attention at that point. The spongy heel was probably at about the 90 day mark for me. Um, so, but at four months, I was now um, chronologically almost 46. I was biologically 29. Wow. So yeah. That's a, um, how, many, how many year drop is that? Well, 29 to 44. Well, it was almost 46, so 45 and three quarters, let's say. So, yeah. And your previous biological biomarker that so you had I was said. 39, yeah. So 10 years. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So, and that was not even really, I think, 
truly, I probably should have been at the five month mark with patching before mm -hmm. I even checked it, but it was time. And, you know, so I did yeah. it. Okay. Um, before you go any farther, they're going to ask, because I talk about my biomarkers as well too. Yeah. I didn't test before, so I have no idea oh, where it was, yeah. uh, but I had them done at six months in, and then I had them done at two years in. So yeah. I was you know, quite, quite a bit. Yeah. I'm half my age right now. So and where I am now, but they're going to ask, how do you do that? How do you test your biomarkers? And I know every practitioner or doctor may be a little bit different, whether it's bioresonance or blood. How did you do yours? I use a bioresonance company. Um, and so it is blood and saliva and hair strand testing. Mm. So, um, and we can try to drop that in if you want me to share that. Yeah, please. Um, I would, if you, yeah. yeah, at some point in time, if I'm going like this talking, if you want to drop that information in or sometime towards the end, because I know they're going to want that information. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I think it's a good idea for all of us because, you know, there again, uh, it's kind of like weight is not truly an indicator of health. In my opinion, yeah. it's, you know, the same thing, just because the, the chronological age is this, it doesn't necessarily mean biologically. And unfortunately in the United States, it's more and more that these people are 46, yeah. but yet biologically they're 66. Yeah. So, um, we, but that was a phenomenal, again, science girl. So, you know, I wanted to have some documented evidence there. As far as what I use patching, as my husband loves to say, I am all stickered up. Um, mm -hmm. I truly do wear a combination of almost all of the patches. I do not use silent nights because I do not have issues sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, I do not often use, well, I think I've used Ice Wave twice, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and one of those was preventative, which was great, by the way. But uh, so, you know, I'm just not a big patcher as far as those two go. Everything else is somewhere on my body at some point in the week. Cold and flu season, I wear glutathione every day uh, because we see 100 plus patients a week. Mm -hmm. um, X39, Eon, X49 go on my body every single day. I have always worn carnosine at least five days a week. And that's just because of the nerve issue. So, yeah. but uh, Alavita every single night. And that really for me has little to zero to do with skin. I did not start that patch because of skin. I am, I think I have pretty decent skin. Mm -hmm. um, I started that patch because of the epithalamin response mm -hmm. and lining my organs. We have a very, very strong family history of colon cancer. And so if I can lead to or lend to a healthy colon lining, it's pretty darn hard to grow something that's not healthy. So that was my motivation for Alavita. It's also the second strongest patch. So um, very, very potent, mm -hmm. great for lots and lots of things. So, um, but that one I do wear every single night. So yeah, I'm identical. Slit, never put silent nights on in my life and have used yeah. ice wave for preventative. <laughs> That's yep. too funny. <laughs> That's exactly me too. Same thing, mix and match and putting on here and there. But I feel the same thing with you. So many people don't realize how powerful Aloe Vita is. Oh they my think, God. oh, it's for the skin, la, la, la. Why do you think it's so powerful? Because I feel the same way. Well, you know, anything, first of all, I, it is huge that it decalcifies the pineal gland. You know, we often talk about the third eye or the pineal gland, and, and a lot of people realize that the pineal gland is responsible for, you know, production of melatonin, helping us to absorb and utilize melatonin properly, but it's responsible for a lot of other bodily functions as well, and it works very, very much in synergy or in conjunction with that HPA axis that we talk about, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the adrenals, and those really do control the entire body. Um, not to mention the epithalamin, you know, that healthy inside skin tissue. Mm -hmm. Now, I do think it's important that we keep good skin turgor and good strong skin on the outside. Um, I do think it's great that we continue to produce melatonin. As we age, we just stop producing melatonin. And you know, that's why older, elderly people that aren't in the best of health, they'll sleep all day long and stay awake all night. Mm -hmm. um, also, I think if we could correct the sleep problem in the United States, we would have far less health issues overall. So mm -hmm. I, I just, there's, I could probably talk to you for two hours on Alavita, but, <laughs> um, but for me, my motivation was, I know, and I was a surgical nurse uh, for a private surgeon for seven years. Mm. And so when I tell you, I've seen a lot of the insides of people, I've seen a lot of the insides. And if you have a normal, healthy colon, uh, normal, healthy stomach tissue, gastric lining, uh, normal, healthy, small intestine, which is where all the bad stuff tends to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's very, very difficult to be sick if you have 
a healthy gut, a healthy colon, a healthy small intestine. So, so. when you talk about gut health yep. and longevity, Alavita is in your recommendation. Alavita is in my recommendation. Mm. It's obviously not the only one, but, um, but yeah, it plays yeah. a huge role. Yeah. I, I love sure. that. Thank you for sharing that. And I don't know that I've heard that about the lining of the colon as being something that it's, I'm, I'm more familiar, oxidative stress, inflammatory yep. stress, like you said, that access being able to, you know, really impact the, all of that, the re yep. female and male reproductive organs, organ yep. benefits huge, but that's good to know about the lining of the colon. So many yep. people, you know, they get their colonoscopies and all this and da, 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 but whew. I like that. All right. Thank you for I'm sharing far that. more on the prevention side. Let me yeah, just do me too. lay down some healthy tissue in there and let's call it good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yes. I agree with that. I'm all about the prevention too. Lots of tools in the toolbox. Okay. So they want to know real quickly, where are you placing your patches? Because, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of on the body works in the package doesn't. So do you have set locations that you're applying the patches in your practice for things? I do. I do. I really do. And I will say some of that goes back to that Eastern medicine, that principle of acupressure points, which is, mm -hmm. you know, that is how David Schmidt designed these anyway, yeah. um, is to follow acupressure points. However, you know, sometimes um, getting the right placement and the right combination has just made an exponential difference in what we're seeing with our clients, or our patients. So, um, when possible, I think X39 really should be back here at C7. Mm -hmm. um, and that is one of the ones in the graphic or the diagram. I do think that's very important. If you think about where um, a lot of our cell cells are turned on, our gene expression is turned on, how our cells are produced and how they're proliferated through the body, that just makes sense to put it close to the brainstem. Yeah. Um, so that one, unless there's a reason for me to put it somewhere else, that's kind of the rule of thumb there. And we don't use the below the belly button too much because I'm using that for some, a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you can stack them of course, to, um, we have found for in chronic insomniacs, for example, put your aloe vita patch on first here, then stack mm -hmm. your silent nights on top of it. That seems to be the chef's kiss for my patients. So, um, wow. so I'm not opposed to stacking, but I do like to use as many or access as many acupressure points as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, carnosine, if you have anything in the lower half of the body um, with nerves, let's say, you know, tingling, spongy heel like I had mm -hmm. right above the tailbone, center of the body, right above the tailbone, always and forever. That's my go-to spot. Okay. Um, Eon, we put Eon on the point of the problem. So I don't say the point of pain because for some people it's not pain that we're using it for. Mm -hmm. But um, if I'm going to have a weak spot in my body, it's going to be my low back. So most every day my Eon goes on my low back. Also, I was trying to alleviate all that inflammatory response on those nerves mm -hmm. in my lower back. So that's where my Eon goes. And we do make that very patient specific. Um, and, you know, if you're just doing it preventatively and you don't really have any issues, then, of course, I would follow the graphics in the, mm -hmm. you know, the pamphlet. Um, so glutathione, that's one that that's the master mover for me. I put it all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So it just depends on what we're doing. I will tell you, there's a really neat study that we're doing in office. Um, two finger widths below the belly button for glutathione. If you have chronic back pain, mm -hmm. that is a game changer. Um, now it's really good to put it there for a lot of other things, but, um, it, it makes a huge difference for chronic back pain. That's so, interesting. Uh, good tip. Yeah. Good to yeah. know. If somebody has a sore throat, I bracket them with glutathione, one over here, one over here. Sometimes I bracket an energy enhancer as well. It just depends. Um, mm -hmm. sometimes we'll do glute here and then energy enhancers here. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it really does depend on, you know, what we're trying to target. Now my X49 goes below my belly button every single day because one of the clinical trials supported, uh, a huge reduction in belly weight, you know, belly fat and in, uh, waist circumference by wearing it, especially for women below the belly button. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I saw, I remember David talking about that when it came out below the yeah. belly button or stomach 36 for women. Don't put it on the back of your neck. Men is fine right. on the back of your neck. Right. So, okay. um, and that's my husband has dropped six sizes. That's where he wears it every single day is on the back of his neck. So um, he's, you know, sensory. So he doesn't want it anywhere. He has hair or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Both um, of my, my husband, my husband will put on the back, but both of my husbands, both my husband and my son, <laughs> have one husband, but my husband will put his on the back of his neck. Any other patch he puts on the sides, like on the, the hip muffin top area. My son husband. puts his 39 on one hip, 49 on the other hip. They're like, yep. no, no hair there. We're going there. Yep. Yeah, he's definitely done that as well. Um, energy Enhancer is another, in my opinion, unsung hero. I did not put Energy Enhancer on my body for energy whatsoever. I really am a high energy person. And like I said, I do a lot of other things to make sure that I'm high energy. Yeah. So it had nothing to do with that. But I've had a, I had a, a lymphatic injury um, mm -hmm. in my early 20s. And so from that point forward, that's kind of like when a woman who has to have lymph nodes removed, they have the swelling of the arm, very similar to what I had, had experienced. So that's why I wear energy enhancer, um, opening up those lymphatic channels. So anybody that has issues with swelling or, you know, anything like that, um, we use that a lot. Any of this, oh, virus that we experienced a few years ago um, mm -hmm. that we're still seeing some repercussions from in the body. Um, I highly recommend at least one set of energy enhancers, and we usually do them right below the costal margins here uh, to open up those lung fields and, you know, help with breathing and stuff like that. Um, mine go on the balls of my feet every day. So, um, and that does give you a little bump in energy for sure. Um, also, I love them because they burn 300 to 600 calories every time you put them on. So why not? But I really am. Yeah, I'm wearing them uh, on work days mostly. And that's because I'm even though I sit on an anti-gravity ball chair, I'm still sitting all day long. So um, that to keep that lymph moving. Yeah. I mean, our lymphatic system, it's one of my God questions. It has no pump and it's mm -hmm. so important, vitally important to our bodies and our health. I don't know why we didn't get a little built-in pump, but it's <laughs> we operated. So it needs um, its own measurable rhythm, right? Like our right, heart or breath right. or cranial fluid. Yeah. Yes. And I will say too, as far as the patients are concerned, you know, a couple things for somebody who's been in traditional medicine. Number one, um, non-transdermal mm -hmm. is huge because of course we're familiar with transdermal, you know, the skin is the largest organ. And so when we put something on the skin that's transdermal, we expect it to be um, actually absorbed into the skin, into the system that way. Non-transdermal means that it is activated in some other way, which in this case is, you know, photobiomodulation. Basically, mm -hmm. the heat and the light from our body activates this patch um, with those specific, um, and of course, we don't know the exact formula, and we don't need to know the exact formula, mm -hmm. but those amino acids and electrolytes and structured water and all of that in the center of those patches activates with our body heat, our, our body's light that we emit, and then that in turn activates peptides or turns things on in the body. And so for someone who sees, I mean, I very seldom see a patient that is not on at least one pharmaceutical when they start with me, if not 20 pharmaceuticals. So to be able to have, because even you know, I've made, created a lot of supplements, but they don't always interact and play well with medications. And you mm -hmm. have to be very, very careful and you have to be hyper vigilant about how you do that. Well, this I can put on everybody because it's not going to interfere with medication. It's not going to interfere with anything. And your body innately knows what to do. We are designed to heal. So it's turning on what needs to be turned on. It's not turning on what doesn't need to be turned on. Mm -hmm. So it's just been a game changer in that regard to be able to, you know, activate the right cells and have the right gene expression without me having to be concerned about the medication side or the even the condition side what these people are experiencing and why we might not be able to use supplements um, and that kind of thing so that's been a huge game changer the other big thing for those of us in the western world peer-reviewed studies are hard to come by um, this this technology actually has some peer-reviewed studies and it has tons of multiples of published studies. You do not receive a published study unless your product does what it says it's going to do. And that's whether we're talking about a pharmaceutical or whether we're talking about a supplement or whether we're talking about a wellness technology like this. You cannot receive a published study unless your product is going to do what it says it's going to do. So those were things that were huge um, green flags for me uh, to start. And I did. I just started gangbusters, you know, 
um, with this, particularly with our patients that we would say, you know, you don't have much to lose. Um, we're, we're dealing with conditions that are rapidly progressing. We need to get this under control and do it quickly. And it's just unreal, the results we've seen. Well, and the fact that the technology is patented as well, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> you have patents, Yes. So you know the time, energy and effort and what has to happen in order for that yep. to be achieved. Yep. And we know David Schmitz, the inventor of this technology, and he holds over 150 of them himself personally. And this X39, well, all of our patches are patented, but the X39 has a 20 year patent. And we're in year four of that 20 year patent. So knowing that when you have a patent, you're, it says the patch does this yes. in the body, in the blood, and it yep. does this and that's it. like, you cannot dispute what the patent says, correct? That's, that's absolutely right. It is the most, I take it from me. I know from personal experience, that's the most grueling experience you can go through um, is to receive a patent. So um, yeah, there's no question. And, and, you know, I was, like I said, sold on day one because it's not a matter of if it does it, it absolutely does it. Now, the time frame in which it does it and what it is, you know, cells in our body, specific cells actually are what we call pluripotent. Mm -hmm. So monopotent, of course, when we're in utero and we're developing a head and we're developing fingers and toes and arms and legs and all of that, that's monopotency pluripotent, then that means those healthy cells are going to go where they need to go and do what they need to do. And that is the priority in which the body knows that needs to be done. So we might be patching a patient. We do even now we've had to open up with my assistant um, who is also credentialed in alternative therapies. She does patch consults because we have people just wandering in from other, thankfully doctor's offices and things are referring. So, you know, she'll sit down with them and they want I want my low back pain to go away. Okay, well, here's what we would recommend. Um, pretty much everybody across the board leaves with X39 and Eon because everybody needs those two. But, um, you know, we always preface it by saying, while we want your back pain to go away, and I absolutely think we can get there, you know, you can live, albeit uncomfortable, you can live with back pain. You could have an issue with your liver that none of us know about. You could have an issue with your kidney that none of us know about. You can't live without a liver. You know, you, you could have an issue with the brain. I mean, there's so many things that are unknowns. And I don't care if you've had every scan known to man um, on Monday and this is Tuesday. Only God knows exactly what's going on in the body at any point in time. And our medicine has only gotten to a certain point as far as diagnostics mm -hmm. go. So those cells, though, they go exactly where they need to go. That is the most important area. And that's going to be addressed first. And I just think that's a phenomenal technology. Yeah. Smart technology. Mm -hmm. Working with the body's own ability to do what it was designed to do, which was to keep us in balance, to keep us in homeostasis. And just like so many things that you mentioned, the body is out, people's bodies are out of balance, whether it was from, you know, the, the stuff going around over the last four years or the stuff that was being put into the body <laughs> in that process, whatever it is, it is, you know, things compound. And I love last week, Dr. Jennifer said, you know, we have two things. We have toxicity and we have deficiency. And, and where people don't realize they're bombarded with toxins and they really don't realize a lot of people don't how nutrient deficient their foods are. And so you're seeing people, we're seeing people that are going, I, I, I need something. Give me anything. Give me everything you have. And I love that you said X39 and Eon. Because oh, yeah. we're going to do some questions. I want to hear about your patients in your office, of course. Um, but we're going to do some Q&A. And... X39 and Eon is always a starting point. Can you tell them why really quickly before you share with me some of your clients' experiences? Sure. So it is my perspective. X39, of course, activates the GHK copper peptide. That in turn activates healthy gene expression, healthy cell generation and regeneration. Mm -hmm. um, at 35, we're only using about half of some of our healthy cells and utilizing them by 60. It's more like 10% to 0%. So anytime that we can turn that back on. Um, and I use the example of the five-year-old child that breaks their femur. The femur is the largest bone in the body. It's the bloodiest bone in the body. 
If that five-year-old breaks their femur, a lot of times standard of care now in the United States, we don't even uh, cast that anymore. We just splint it because by the time we cast them, those healthy cells are already rushing to that area. They're remineralizing that bone. They're knitting it back together. And by six, that kid has no clue they broke their largest bone in their body. I am chronologically 46. If I break my femur, the largest bloodiest bone in my body, uh, without patching, number one, I'm very much likely going to know that I've broken that bone for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, I'm going to end up with a titanium rod. I'm going to end up with a lot of physical therapy and uh, it being the largest bloodiest bone in the body. About 85% of the time, I think the most recent study showed uh, you end up with at least a micro brain bleed because it's the bloodiest bone in the body. What? So, yes. I so, have not heard that. How do you yeah. end up with a brain bleed from a broken bone in your leg? Well, it is the bloodiest just bone from blood, in, just in from the blood. body. And of course, all of our red blood cell production, you know, think about what bone marrow actually oh, yeah. is. Um, so there's a direct correlation there. Wow. Yeah. So I won't get real sciencey, but there is a direct correlation. Tell me that later then. I need to see yeah. that study. <laughs> Yeah. So um, my point being with these X39 patches, you know, with long enough wear use, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. my body is going to have much more similar response to that five-year-old mm -hmm. because my genes are still on, my cells are still working for me, um, and they're still very much awake and alive and remineralizing and knitting back together and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So X39 is very important because we need that healthy cellular response. Mm -hmm. Eon, however, is in my opinion, equally important, if not even a little more important because it activates that master anti-inflammatory effect in the body, not to mention anecdotally, which was found in the clinical trials, it's the happy patch. It also balances the hormones, balances the endocrine system. Well, we're all a little stressed. We're all in fight or flight a little more than we should be. Um, and then most of us have some other conditions somewhere along the way that relate back to the endocrine system mm -hmm. or inflammation or both. I always tell my patients, nothing good happens in an inflamed body, period. But also the favorite meal of inflammation is a healthy cell. So if we're turning on healthy cell production and healthy gene expression, and we're not managing the inflammation, then um, it, you know, we're not going to have the same outcome. It's not to say that you won't eventually get there, but it is a much, much more powerful response mm -hmm. if you're using those two together. Mm, that is fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. So let's hear about some of your wow, like client experiences. So I'm going to, I'll touch on the Alavita. I have a, um, gentleman, he was in his 40s, um, diagnosed with uh, some atypical rogue cells in the colon. Mm -hmm. um, he also had some other health conditions. And so he made the decision that and it really he wasn't a great candidate for traditional therapy. And so we had been working together probably a year, uh, maybe longer than that. And he had been coming in for the modalities and doing lots of things. So I want to make sure that everybody understands we were making progress. Mm -hmm. But enter the patches. And so um, I have requested because that is a case where he, he elected for no surgery. So we needed diagnostics every three to six months so that I could kind of measure our progress. And so everything had been sort of iffy. I mean, it wasn't shrinking, it wasn't growing, but it was just there. Mm -hmm. That's not what any practitioner, whether we're talking traditional or otherwise, wants to see. We need to see the needle move one way or another so we know kind of what to do. We okay. prefer that it move in the way of, oh, this is going away. Mm -hmm. So we started patching his, his next three-month increment. Um, we saw significant change. And by now, we've now had two sets of imaging. And that particular area <clears throat> that was of concern, even the toughest of the radiologists who never want to commit one way or another, everybody's having to say, and the oncologist who um, we just have to agree to disagree a whole lot of the time, everybody's agreed, we're done. We don't have to worry about that. So that, to be so young, um, now he's got some other health conditions we're working on, full disclosure, but, but to be so young and to use no um, traditional means and to see that kind of result. And the only thing really that changed was the fact that we were able to start using patches. And before everybody asks, I will tell you X39, <laughs> Eon, Alavita, remember I said colon, um, mm -hmm. Alavita, those were our three big ones. 
Um, and then of course we added, we have added glutathione, you know, when at times I'll say we do occasionally do energy enhancers. We did energy enhancers when we were really trying to slow the process, mm -hmm. um, just to keep that lymphatic system open and healthy. Um, but the major players in that were X39, Eon and, um, the Alavita. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So, have another one who um, very similar atypical rogue cells, very complex case. This is a, a young lady who has been um, fighting this particular issue for about, I don't know, four, six years and was in remission, now is not in remission. And that's how she got to me. And so, again, she is um, a nurse. She has lots of knowledge about alternative therapies and things like that, had already instituted a lot of things. We tweaked her supplements. And, you know, I do want to say um, I'm not suggesting that these patches necessarily take the place of everything. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I still take supplements some. I take a whole lot less now. I can tell you that. Um, which my husband laughs and says, we've spent thousands of dollars and six years with you developing these supplements. And now you're telling people to put a patch on, but it's true because we just don't need as much anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so we tweaked some of that for her and she just wasn't making progress. In fact, some of those numbers that we watched were creeping up and that was despite our best efforts. And I said, and I had mentioned the patches to her and she, um, she said, let's, I'm, I'm a nurse brain. So let's do one thing at a time. So we got around to, okay, now your numbers are creeping up. She said, okay, I'm good with the patching. She, like me, read the clinical trials and the data. And she just was in this week. Her markers are remarkably improved. Mm -hmm. And this is a, I wish I could tell you all of her story, but uh, I'm not talking about a simple little patch of cells that we need to worry about. Um, this is a, a very... Uh, could be a very, very serious situation, but she, it's remarkable. Um, you know, we've got a, a patient that needed to have a knee replaced and mm -hmm. now they don't. Um, we have mul too many stories for me to tell you about chronic pain issues. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the list goes on and on and on. I, one of my favorites, I don't know what it is about these nurses, but she, uh, <laughs> you know, read the studies as well. She totally bought into it. She was ready to go. And um, I've never seen a response with a um, blood pressure like she had, but um, two, two blood pressure agents for 45 years and um, in three weeks was totally off of them, <laughs> totally off of them. So, um, and for that one, Eon X39 Carnosine mm. um, is what we did there. So, uh, and, and then I have my assistant who takes notes for me and, um, just, we, we can't live without her. She, uh, so I had, you know, briefed my staff about the patches and I had explained the technology to them, but we were waiting for them to come in. We did the, I, I kind of chose the route of, I'm going to buy patches for myself. I'm going to buy patches for my staff. And then I'm going to do the retail package so that we can have some available in the office. Mm -hmm. And so we were waiting on those to come in. I was in with a patient. I had no idea what they were doing. This is my assistant who had chronic back pain for debilitating back pain. They were selling their home because she no longer could go up and down the stairs appropriately. Well, if I had patched her, I would have put Eon on the point of pain. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't know because they knew very little about the patches anyway. So they just stuck an X39 right on her mid low back um, within, and her knee had started to bother her because of her gait change and all of that. Within eight minutes, her knee pain was gone. And within 30 minutes, her back pain was gone and stayed gone. Wow. So she truly really is that one patch wonder. Wow. Um, so yeah, I don't have to say much about the patches in my office. We've had so many staff related <laughs> uh, positives yeah. that they kind of take care of it. Uh, by the time the patient gets to me, they're like, tell me about these patches. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. And I could go on and on all night. We wow. just, and again, I don't want to say that this is the only thing we use, mm -hmm. yeah. but it is the only thing we've changed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to see these rapid results and these, you know, it's just, um, it's quite refreshing. Um, wow. and it's something that we will utilize always. I love that. We're very much the same as in, we have a lot of tools in our toolbox and we yeah. utilize those tools as needed to help people. Right. And some tools work better than others for some people, right? We know that some people respond differently, but this bypasses all of that, I find. 
yeah. whether it's a one patch wonder or whether it takes, you know, four to six months or, or longer, right. This will address all of those things without having to absorb anything, digest or assimilate or worry about, is this actually doing what I think it's going to be doing? Cause it's happening literally at the speed of light inside of your body. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And there's no thought. Like I love, I have a, a lady in the UK and she's big animal, right? Big, big, big with her, her animals on her property. And she said, you know, a dog can't, can't make this up. A horse can't make this up. These right. cats can't make this up when they injure themselves and I patch them. And this is, this is again, her speaking, right? Yeah. They, they get, they're fine. <laughs> and you know, Absolutely. sometimes you think, oh, this is a placebo. And then I've had people say, oh, this is a placebo. Sign me up for it because <laughs> this is well, the best non-invasive affordable placebo I've ever seen. And we know it's obviously not from the studies, but yeah. it's like still, wow. It's just, it's just yeah. working like that. No matter what, it's always working. Right. And always. we say that about everything in our office. Hey, so what if it is placebo? You certainly look, feel and act a whole lot better. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't, really put that. On, don't put pet catches patches on young cats though of course I did a science experiment with them as well with our used patches oh my gosh we didn't sleep all night because yeah. they were crazy wild <laughs> yeah I have so a two-year-old and a five-year-old dog and we don't yeah. patch them no do. <laughs> if they're older chronic pain issues absolutely we've got lots of stories from those from our patients telling us about that yeah. um but I did I patched them just to see what would happen uh no I won't do okay. that again <laughs> I don't blame you. Cats can be crazy anyways, right? Oh, right. I love, I love them. Okay. So we have some questions. Are you okay for some questions for the next sure. 10 minutes? Okay. So we're going to kind of go through as many as we can fast. Um, so just kind of, you know, spit out whatever you would recommend. So somebody has anger, they're craving things like sugary things, right? And uh, they've got some, you know, ringing in their ears. What would you recommend? X39 Eon SP6. Fantastic. And yeah, some of these I'm going to skip past because you've addressed many different things in here. What about somebody that has a chronic, uh, the crushed pelvis at age 15 and now they're 40 and they've got, you know, chronic issues and kind of lumps and bumps coming out of the pelvic area and stuff. So Eon X39, X49 would be very important there and possibly energy enhancer, depending on what lumps and bumps we're talking about. Yeah. If it's the lymphatic system, the lymph nodes or whatever. What about somebody that needs to gain weight? I know your husband dropped six pant sizes, but what if you need to gain weight? What I've, and I've had a few of those in my practice. What I've started them with is X39 and Eon. I find that most of the time that takes care of it. Interestingly, mm -hmm. SB6, again, it's an intelligent patch. It's going to do what needs to be done in the body, the way in which it needs mm -hmm. to be done. So I have added that for a couple of people and we've had success as well. So it's not just for weight loss. I, that patch is kind of an unsung hero mm -hmm. and everybody sort of touts it as weight loss. I sell them to never use that for weight loss. Yeah. 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 Okay. Fantastic. What about um, kidney issues? Just anything to do with the kidney. So X39 and Eon, that's kind of standard. And then carnosine is very okay. important for the kidney. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. All right. And um, what about, uh, let's just say your, you know, your heart's not quite functioning right and those numbers are elevated. <laughs> What would yeah. we recommend for anything to do with that pumper? So X39, Eon, Carnosine, and depending on what kind of pumping issue we were having, X49 would be another alternative. Mm -hmm. um, Carnosine and X39, it's very interesting, the studies on regeneration of the cardiovascular system and restoring it to eight weeks younger with six weeks of use. Uh, use. So um, anything to do, I, I say anything to do with blood flow issues. So, you know, your heart pumps blood, your brain, you got to have some good perfusion of blood through there. Um, also, carnosine is potent in helping to bind with aluminum, which is a huge problem in the brain as well. Mm -hmm. um, but those would be my, my absolutes would be X39, Eon and carnosine. And then if they could, um, and depending on what the issue might be, I would add X49. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So let's say um, specific issues with the brain. You've had, you know, things have went south in that, north in that department. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the, yep. anything neurological, anything yep. at all brain. X39, Eon, X49. And then in that case, carnosine sometimes, depending on what those issues might be. Um, mm -hmm. But if, and depending on how, where they were in that condition or that issue. 
but definitely 39, uh, 49 and um, beyond for sure. Okay, fantastic. And um, you've addressed like the uh, nerve kind of pain, nerve pain, fingers, inflammation, things like that. Um, yep. What if it what if it goes a little bit more where it's like up in the wrist and you know we get up in that area with with the kind of pain and inflammation or you know joints that kind of stuff. So obviously ice wave if you need it for pain control for sure. Um, X thirty nine Eon. Um, Carnosine, I would probably advocate for as well with that. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, that's probably where I would start with that. Okay, fantastic. Well, that's- We have a really, I mean, if we're talking about, you know, people uh, that type a lot or they, you know, um, stylists, hairstylists are the ones that mm -hmm. I constantly see with this. Um, there's, you can be really intentional about how you patch your Eon Mm -hmm. and your carnosine on the wrists. And that makes a huge improvement. And really it would apply to anything to do with, you know, with the nerves and inflammation in that area. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. So when you have patients that have had maybe say blood work for, um, let's just say, you know, that protein that gets kind of out of whack from the stuff we dealt with years ago, yep. have you found that any patches have helped with that specific protein that's gone rampant in our body. <laughs> so glutathione for sure. I haven't talked about that one a lot tonight, yeah. but I could talk about that one for hours. <laughs> um, that one for sure. Um, Eon and X39 for sure. And I would absolutely do X49 um, mm -hmm. just because of the correlation there with, you know, some of the other great benefits that uh, X49 creates a mm -hmm. protection uh, for our bodies against. But um, yeah, that is, those are the standards and then energy enhancers, of course, too, depending on exactly what, what we might be dealing with from that protein. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So what about if someone has like screws in their body or you mentioned a titanium rod earlier or a hip or knee replacement or, um, you know, like a pacemaker or something like that, that's in their body that they were not born with. What do you, um, how do you feel about that? What do you suggest? Oh, well, I patch everybody. So that wouldn't bother me at all. Okay. Um, and it would really, I mean, if everything's functioning well, then I would say we would just stick with the Eon X39 for sure. Mm -hmm. If they felt that there were some conditions coming from or arising from some of those implantable devices or, you know, that kind of stuff, then it would sort of depend, um, on, on what, what the problem was. Um, you know, I think anyone with a, a de an implantable device as it pertains to, <laughs> then I would probably um, say it would be a no brainer to be on carnosine in addition to that, just because mm -hmm. you want to keep that muscle as healthy as you possibly can. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, cause there's obviously been some electrical issues there already. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, definitely. Okay. What about if someone's had like a actual, like a tear of like the tensor fascia, uh, in the hip, the tensor fascia, a lot of in the hip. So think more along the lines of, you know, muscle tear, tendon, yep. ligament, you know, yep. that kind of thing. It's not the same as a bone, obviously. Um, right. I do recommend the same for kind of everything that has to do with tendons, cartilage, muscle, um, that kind of stuff. X39, Eon, um, carnosine and glutathione. Mm. Um, and if it were in the hip area, then I would place mm. those kind of in a specific way. Um, it is my rule of thumb. I typically, the glutathione, unless we're bracketing or something like that, that tends to stay on the right side of the body. The liver's on the right side of the body. Um, glutathione would be on the right side. Um, carnosine, if we're going to pick a side, it's either going to be center of the body or the hip or whatever we're talking about or to the left. Mm -hmm. And then I like Eon kind of in a little, you know, housetop, not like a triangle without a bottom. Um, mm -hmm. So I would put Eon kind of right in the middle uh, top section pretty much across the board, no matter what we're dealing with. And then X39, it's sort of up to them. Most people still stick with the same point here, but you certainly can put it locally as well. When my son did what he did with his ankle, um, mm -hmm. I had X39s on both sides of the ankle. I had um, Eons on both sides of the ankle. So, mm -hmm. and that's an injury that should have kept him out for a while. Um, and in, 
a day and a half, he was brand new. Now he was also 17. So um, keep that in mind. But yeah, my son had the same thing ankle injury <laughs> at age 17. I did the same thing multiple patch and he was literally off crutches and good to go. The next yeah, that, and that was that was his response to wow. so, um, Yeah. Boom. And sometimes I think too, you know, our brain stems tell our body, that's just the truth mm -hmm. of it. So I think sometimes if we visually see ourselves putting a patch where we have the problem, you and I both know we've read the clinical trials. We know those patches are going to work. It mm -hmm. really doesn't matter where you put them on the body. Um, I do think stimulating acupressure points, that is important. But mm -hmm. I do think if we have an injury and we see these patches, they're here. Mm -hmm. I think it helps our brain stem and our, our body. Um, it might speed it up a little. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, I said that all the time to people it's mental, right? We, we are yeah. trained and programmed to put something on the body where the issue is. That's and right. so if you feel like you need to do that, do that. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it. It doesn't, right. but on the same token, we've heard countless testimonials of people that do nothing but the back of the neck and all these other things get yeah. fixed and they've yeah. never patched them. Yeah. Just put it on. <laughs> Just get it on the body. <laughs> but I know that everyone is going to, they're like in the chat, they're literally probably thousands of comments. I can't keep up with all of them, but they're, I know they're going to be like, okay, let me go back and listen to it again. Cause where did she say for this? Where did she say for that? What was this? Because, you know, everybody wants the tips, right? They want the suggestions. So thank you for being so open and sharing those. But I need you to discuss water, hydration, yes. because that is key. Why is that key? Well, for a few reasons, you know, anytime we're turning on anything in the body, positive or negative, we do have to be well hydrated. And 85% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. It's just the truth. Um, other countries fall a little bit less than that. But as a, as a world in general, we are chronically a little dehydrated. Also, just because we are drinking water, um, and our rule of thumb has always been half of your body weight in ounces. That is still my rule of thumb. If we're adding a glutathione patch, sometimes I up that a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the other key that we miss, especially in the United States, because there's so much bad information out there, we don't remineralize properly. So while you do need to drink your water, you also need to be taking in some form of healthy electrolytes so that we are detoxing, we are purging from the body uh, appropriately. We have the right amount of fluid on board that we can actually do that. Um, mm -hmm. But also cellular response is directly related to how hydrated you are. We want water pulled into the cells. Um, I do things a little differently than some practitioners and some of that goes back to the Western Eastern thing. We put a pinch of pink Himalayan salt in all of the water that we drink. If you don't want to taste, change the play, flavor profile, a pinch is perfect. We mm -hmm. also put a pinch of Celtic salt on our tongue or under our tongue at least once a day. That, for most of the people, that takes care of it. You want to squeeze a little fresh lemon in there or a little lime in there, mm -hmm. that's really going to bump it up. My kids are 18 and 23. Yep, <laughs> mine's right here. I have it pre-mixed. <laughs> um, <laughs> my kids are 18 and 23. Uh, they don't, they don't haven't ever done Gatorade and all of those yeah. types of things we do. And I have a marathon runner, one of them. And then the, the performance travel ball player, we drink pink salt, water, lemon juice. If you want to add a little honey to get a little natural sugar, you certainly can do that. A little apple cider vinegar, whatever, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be complicated. I do think that the patch pro all the patch community we should be putting some electrolytes in though and you certainly can get some clean stick forms and all that I just have it's worked for years so I've stuck with pink salt and I like pink salt we don't have time to go into all that but I like it in the water I like Celtic under the tongue yeah and that's just because they have a little bit different mineral profile mm -hmm. so, yeah, they do. Uh, and we can't wait for David's day and nighttime yes. formula to come out I know yes exactly so and we don't have time to get into that either yeah, yeah. But yeah hydration is absolutely key anytime we've had a couple of issues of what we call retracing where somebody might have a little experience that might not be positive right away um, but 99% of the time if they're having any I don't feel well I've got you know something going on it's just they're not hydrated we drink some good mineralized water and they're good to go yeah Totally agree. Well, Jill, thank you so much for spending this hour with us this evening and everything you poured into everyone. You are a 
wealth of knowledge. And I know we had almost 600 people on here tonight. You're like, yes. Well, it's my privilege and honor. I could talk about LifeWave and I think I do talk about LifeWave in my city. <laughs> I had my first dream last night with David Schmidt in it. I was like, oh my gosh, David Schmidt's on stage. <laughs> and I've I'm never dreamed about you know, the patches. I don't think I've dreamed about him, but I have dreamed about the patches. So. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I have tons of dreams all the time, but I've never had one with him in it. And last night I was, I was like, okay, David's on. And he was a little bit older. And I'm like, all right. He was calling me up to speak. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> So funny. The patches definitely make you sleep crazy deep and dream very vivid dreams, yes, realistic yes. dreams. But thank you so much, Jill, for taking the time tonight. I'm just so grateful for you. And I will have this recording up um, and I'll send it to you as well, too. So you can share it with all of your audience as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night.